The two final games in Group B take place this evening. There's one automatic place up for grabs and potentially a third place qualification on offer as well. It's Italy against Croatia in Leipzig on TalkSport with Nigel Adley and former England striker Dean Ashton. On TalkSport 2, it's group winners Spain against Albania in Dusseldorf with former England captain Stuart Pearce alongside Jim Proudfoot. And here on TalkSport, the game is in the east of Germany. Leipzig has been super sunny with temperatures in the mid-20s and above all day. This is where Portugal came from behind to beat the Czechs in Group F. This is also where France and the Netherlands drew nil-nil. It's where the Euro 2024 futures for Italy and Croatia will be decided. Croatia and Italy fans have been mixing in the centre of Leipzig freely and happily all day. But Dean Ashton pressure on Italy here if the European champions don't get out of the group that will cause problems back home absolutely absolutely as the holders um, well they've not had um, the best of time since as such but this still is a, a terrific team with so much talent and to think that they could go out tonight I think would be a massive massive surprise in this competition and actually they're the type of side as well I think if they were to get through you wouldn't really want to face them you know they're just sort of that that handling of pressure once it gets to the big, big moments of the knockout stages as, as such, you know, is almost carved into their 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 history. And, and it feels like a really big game for them to, to come back as well after that performance from Spain to put on a real top performance and a result against Croatia and get themselves through, I think would, would certainly send a message to the rest of the tournament that this Italy side should not be written off at all. Uh, teams are in the tunnel. Let me tell you, breakfast on TalkSport tomorrow is with Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoy from 6am on the day England play their final group game in Cologne. Among the guests, Ashley Young, who played under Gareth Southgate for England at the World Cup 2018. Former England striker Ricky Lambert's on the show as well. And former Scotland man, Barry Bannon, at his peak. His creativity might have helped uh, Scotland in this tournament. White and Jordan from 10am comes live from Germany. And if you've not seen the video footage of Jim White when Hungary scored their winner check out at TalkSport on Instagram, it's there it's not just Jim White's reaction it's the face of Simon Jordan after Hungary take the lead in the 100th minute well, let's focus on tonight's game uh, I'm going to be bringing you updates from here in Dusseldorf as much change Spain take on Albania who'll be going for it, European champions Italy could be heading home tonight or they could be heading through to the knockout stages Croatia need a win, this could get very very exciting we'll keep updated with that other game in this group Spain Albania here in Dusseldorf that's on TalkSport to the commentary but right now on TalkSport it's Italy against Croatia with former England striker Dean Ashton and your commentator Nigel Adderley Thank you, Adrian. Good evening once again. The jeopardy is very real for both of these nations tonight. A draw, enough for Italy, but a nation carrying that baggage of recent World Cup failures will always be nervous in this sort of situation. While if Croatia don't get three points, the Modric era is surely over. Could this be the last time we see a true magician perform at this sort of level? And Dean Ashton, if it is, it's a massive shame but time waits for no person and at the age of 38 he must know time is running out and he has to make the most of tonight yes he does and still those players and certainly those young players now coming through for Croatia they turn their heads and they look to him and he won't shirk the responsibility that's for sure you wait he will get himself on the ball he's still got that energy he's still got a bit of pace about him when he's dribbling through midfield but can he get the others around him to put on a proper team performance, which is what they've lacked so far, is every part of the team working well together. Can he help produce that in what is a vital game? Well, Modric, Brozovic and Kovacic have more caps combined than the entirety of the Italian starting eleven, which just tells you what you need to know about their longevity. But they do have Susic and Pasalic in the starting lineup this evening and their legs made a real difference in the comeback against Albania which of course they couldn't quite finish the job with Albania equalising very late on as the two teams emerge into the evening sunshine in the east of Germany in Leipzig this is a stadium built for the 2006 World Cup and here in 2024 it is a night of destiny for both Italy and Croatia. The reigning champions 
against a side who regularly reach the semi-finals of World Cups but have often laboured in the European Championships and they start tonight bottom of Group B and is this the final dance for their golden generation or will Italy fail on the big stage yet again we will start with the national anthems and listen to that noise inside the stadium and we have our beautiful home of the national, national anthem of Croatia, of Croatia. inside the stadium in Leipzig two passionate football nations really coming to the fore there a reminder of the two teams here on TalkSport four changes for Croatia from their 2-2 draw against Albania out go Maja, Perisic, Petkovic and Juranovic in come Stanisic and Pongracic at the back and Susic and Pasalic will be in attack so Gvardiol moves from the centre of defence out to left back once again it is Lovakovic in goal, Stanisic, Sotalo, Pongracic and Gvardiol the back four Modric, Brozovic and Kovacic in midfield Susic, Kramaric and Pasalic in attack some big changes made by Spalletti for Italy Fratesi, Scamacca and Chiesa all on the bench the Argentinian born Rategui will lead the attack supported by Raspadori with Damian coming back into the team DeMarco will be pushed further forward from left back and we will wait to see if Damian will be part of a back three or a back four it is Donnarumma in goal De Lorenzo Bastoni Calafiori and Damian Barella and Jorginho Raspadori Pellegrini and DeMarco in support of Rategui in attack Donnarumma and Modric the two captains meeting with our match referee Danny McAley from the Netherlands Bastian Dankert of Germany is the VAR official for this game as well supporting Rob Diverink 
And a word about the Italian strikers, Dean. He's fiddled all the way through Spalletti, both in this competition and also in the qualification. And now it is a big call to drop players like Scamacca and Chiesa for a game like this. It is. It certainly is. I thought Chiesa, especially in that first game against Albania in the first half, he was the elite performer of the game. Um, but with Raspadori and Rotegri, there is that pace, there is that movement as well that can cause Croatia a lot of issues, which they've shown. Shutalo and Pongratic have shown if they're exposed 1v1 or on their own with the two fullbacks high, they can look very, very vulnerable. And it's Croatia in those famous red and white checkerboard shirts who will get the game underway. Realistically, this is a match they must win or they will be going home. A defeat for the Italians and a shock win for Albania against Spain and the Azzurri will also be on the first flight back to Rome tomorrow morning. This, a classic knockout scenario at the end of the group stage. And here in Group B, two really big games with two sulfurous atmospheres. Over on TalkSport 2, we will bring you Albania against Spain. Here on TalkSport, Croatia get the match underway, defending the goal away to our right in the first half. Italy in their famous all blue Croatia in the red and white and Croatia really have to go for it but the question is do they try and contain in the opening stages Dean Ashton to maybe draw the Italians on that could be the heart of the game well ultimately as well with those three midfield players they want to dominate possession they'll want to play through Italy and I think actually Italy will sit back and it is a back three for the Italians with two wing backs and that three man midfield Raspadori and Rotegui two centre forwards so yet again a change of defensive shape from Luciano Spalletti Matteo Damian brought in as one of the central defenders with DeMarco and Di Lorenzo looking to push on against a team without fantastic collective pace although Susic and Pasalic really did make an impact with their energy against Albania I think that is obviously a, an issue they're lacking those killer forwards Mandzukic retiring the last one that you felt had genuine quality at, at this high high level and with those three midfield players you would just want those forward players to take advantage of the build up play a reminder in group B Spain already through as group winners with six points Italy starting this game in second with three they will be through as the runners up with a draw and the runners-up in this group will meet Switzerland in the round of 16. Potentially England in the quarter-finals as well, if England take care of business in Group C live on Talk Sport tomorrow night. Croatia through with the win. And assuming Albania don't win, although I'm sure they will go through in third place if they pick up four points. And if they're level on points with Albania, it could come down to goal scored, goal difference disciplinary points or even their performances in the qualifiers and if it gets down to that then Albania have the tiebreaker over Croatia two minutes played in the early stages and it's that early game of chess we suspected with Croatia and Italy level at nil nil I think maybe a little pattern of the game though already the Italians just sitting in with that line of five with DeMarco and Di Lorenzo sitting deep to start with and three midfielders in front and Croatia looking to keep the ball and probe into Kovacic and Modric the two wider midfield players with Brozovic a little deeper Italy came to Germany and ground out a nil-nil draw in Leverkusen against Ukraine to book their place in the finals holding off the Ukrainians on their head-to-head -head record but it's a big risk to go for something similar in the group stage no second chances here tonight I think what they'll be looking for is when Stanisic and Gvardiol venture slightly for, more forwards can they when they win the ball back then it could be a 2v2 with the two Italian forwards against Shitalo and Pongracic at the back I think that's what they'll be looking for the Italians Pongracic now plays it wide to the far side and Stanisic the early ball forward looking for Kramaric into the penalty area but Bastoni comes across and he shepherds the ball behind gets a round of applause from Donnarumma 
and it will be a goal kick. Adrian will keep us up to date with events inside the stadium in Dusseldorf where Albania meets Spain, really needing to win that game to go through. If you want commentary on that match with Jim and Stewart, then that is available on TalkSport too. It's a great night if you haven't already to download the TalkSport app, go to the live commentary section and you can swipe between the two commentaries currently underway. As Croatia come forward now and a shot fired in and it's tipped over by Donnarumma and Croatia with the first shot in anger and Donnarumma there was nearly caught out with the power way outside the penalty area and he's able to tip the ball aside for a corner. Oh, it's a ferocious hit though from Susic going right in the top corner and actually I think it got quicker as it left his foot the speed of the ball just accelerated towards the goal which actually caught Donnarumma out slightly he still was able to pat it over the top with his huge frame four and a half minutes played the first corner for Croatia taken by Modric into the near post guided away successfully on this occasion by Di Lorenzo and Croatia will have the throw in and Modric will Leave it for Josko Gvardiol of Manchester City. Infield again towards Modric, who just missed controls, and it's quickly won back. Forward towards Retegui, and Sotalo just comes away from the challenge with him holding his face, but play continues. Stanisic sliding in well to win it back on the far side from DeMarco. There were some injury concerns about Federico DeMarco before this game, but fit to start but a lunging challenge coming in there from Stanisic to halt his progress down the Italian left. Yeah, took a little risk at Stanisic because if he, if he didn't get hold of the ball, he would ha be having a, an early yellow card, a bit of tape on the right calf of DiMarco. That slight fitness issue, but it's important they, get, they have him fit because he's been terrific for Inter Milan on that left-hand side and getting forwards. Fratesi, Scamacca and Chiesa left out for the Italians. It's the first time they have not started in a major tournament without a Juventus player since a World Cup game against Cameroon back in 1998. As it's played back by Stanisic on the far side and all the way back towards the halfway line. And Pongracic, born in Germany, formerly with Wolfsburg and Dortmund. Plays it wide to the far side. Brozovic with the first time ball forward, but it's cut out by Pellegrini. Quickly forward to Barella, midway inside the Croatian half, but it's broken up by Kovacic, but his ball forward doesn't find Kramaric, and it's gathered again by Damian on this near side. One of three Italian central defenders. Six and a half minutes played on Talk Sport, the conclusion of Group B at UEFA Euro 2024. Goalless here, and also goalless in Dusseldorf between Spain and Albania if it stays like this Spain going through as group winners we already know Italy will finish second Albania would finish third but with only two points as Di Lorenzo comes forward now for Italy down the right a low ball slid in towards the near post and it's covered well by Pongracic and it will be a throw into Italy on this near side a huge hole opened up on the right hand side though there from Croatia's point of view Di Lorenzo completely free on the right hand side in the end it was a poor delivery Allowing Pongratic to get ahead of his the forward. But that's what just straight away, that's just a little alarm for Croatia. Well, they have to go for it, so inevitably there will be some gaps the longer the game goes on. Darmian. With his long hair slicked back on this near side. Plays it forward and down the line for Vasvadori. Calafiori, the central defender in the right winger's position but his ball towards the edge of the penalty area is cut out by Modric quickly forward towards Gvardiol Danny Makali waves play to continue as Gvardiol goes down under a challenge and Modric plays it wide towards the far side and Stanisic another German based player in the Croatian team won the title with Leverkusen this season on loan from Bayern that's not a bad move and just a a little point there as Croatia won that ball back and looked to to break went into the forwards but those midfield players those three they are not looking for a counter-attack that is of no interest to them they slowed things right down again allowed Italy to get back into position and now going back to that slow steady build-up now Susic wide to this near side 
and Gvardiol. Kramaric peels away to the left-hand side. Kovacic, though, gathers at walking pace. And now it's finally worked wide by Brozovic towards this near side. And Kramaric. Now Gvardiol again, 25 yards out in a central area. But Italy have bottled up all the opportunities for now. Nine minutes played on Talk Sport. Nil-nil in Leipzig. And Susic has the ball on this near side. Also goalless as well in Dusseldorf at the start of this double header at the conclusion of Group B and Croatia once again looking to work their pretty patterns 10 yards inside the Italian half but at the moment they are going nowhere fast but it's quickly played forward towards Pasalic the ball rears up and strikes him on the hand as a result he miscontrols and Italy have the ball back some lovely build up some lovely possession for Croatia but as of yet not once really they've looked to threaten the Italian penalty area other than that long strike but they haven't been able to penetrate through yet Bongrakic does well to win it back now for Croatia fighting Modric down the right hand side an injection of pace from him to take him beyond Pellegrini momentarily now Susic on the far side Stanisic all the way back to the halfway line Rotegui looking to chase but it's guided all the way back by Stanisic towards Lavakovic once again he's got pace Matteo Rotegui and again that's what Italy will be looking for if they can win the ball back can they quickly get it to him or Raspadori against the two centre-backs and do them for pace now Damian finding Bastoni back towards Damian again Barella who scored the winning goal ultimately against Albania in the opening game there's the quick switch from Italy wide towards the left-hand side and DeMarco the early cross in and it was a glancing header diving in at the near post from Pellegrini I'm not sure he was the intended target and in the event the header was well wide of that near post no it was never going to threaten was it but there's big spaces out wide for Italy first of all it was Di Lorenzo a few minutes ago on the right hand side this time just a ball played out to DeMarco so much space because Croatia's two wide players took in and the two fullbacks also Pellegrini really needs to leave that and let that flash across the penalty area he was too far out for a diving header there Donnarumma outside his penalty area lofts it wide to this near side for Di Lorenzo who is quickly under pressure from Guardiol they were both holding on to each other but in the end Danny Makili has given the free kick to Italy you're listening to Euro Game Day live on Talk Sport presented by Carling the UK's number one lager 18 plus please drink responsibly 11 minutes play Croatia nil Italy nil a point will be enough for Italy Croatia have to win and Albania also need to beat Spain as Kovacic does well to win it back from Raspadori midway inside the Italian half and now it's played wide to this near side and Gvardiol and Croatia here once again just have the glimmer of an opening but that lack of pace just betrays them and Italy very quickly slam the door shut again yeah, they had an excellent opportunity. Kovacic winning it in midfield should be striding towards the penalty area and didn't. Kramaric now with a low ball across towards the near post and Damian dives in with Donnarumma. Both were committed there. It was Damian who got there before his goalkeeper with Pasaric lurking for the tap-in. Yeah, I think both of them would have got it. Donnarumma would have just handled that cleanly if not, but it's better to get it away and argue after than neither go for it because if he hadn't, it would have been a tap-in. Big day coming up tomorrow, of course. Eight o'clock kickoff, England against Slovenia here on Talk Sport. Serbia against Denmark will also be on Talk Sport 2 from Group C. Before that, five o'clock kickoffs at the end of Group D. The Netherlands against Austria will be on Talk Sport. France against Poland over on Talk Sport 2. And a goal has gone in in the other match in this group in Dusseldorf. Here's Adrian Durham. It's Albania nil, Spain won Albania with a bright, lively, aggressive start, but it's Spain with the breakthrough, and it's a brilliant finish from Ferran Torres, the former Manchester City man, 20 goals in 44 appearances for Spain. It's a lovely curling left footer in off the post. Strakosha no chance, and it's Albania nil, Spain won. Thanks, Adrian. That means Spain heading for maximum points. It also lifts Croatia above Albania into third place. They have two points with a minus three goal difference at the moment. I don't think that will be enough, anywhere near enough, to take them through to the round of 16. As Di Lorenzo comes forward here for Italy, the low cross into the near post. 
deflected behind by Gradiol. Italy have a corner with 13 minutes play. Dean Ashton. And that's an issue at the moment for Croatia. That's now three times the switch of play has been so easy for Italy to get it to their wing backs. It's whether Gvardiol and Stanisic are so worried about tucking in and helping the two centre backs who are up against two forwards and then giving up all that space out wide. Haven't made the most of it yet, Italy. DeMarco will take the corner kick as a plastic beer glass is thrown by the Croatian supporters on this near side. It's kicked off the field by Matteo Kovacic who implores his own supporters not to do it again and as a result two or three more are thrown onto the playing surface the corner is fizzed in by DeMarco towards the near post cleared away though initially and now an opportunity for Modric to try and break on this near side beyond the stumbling Barella initially but Barella is quick enough to recover and does well to play the ball in field towards Jorginho and Italy very quickly have the ball back he's still got a, a turn of pace over the first three or four yards Luka Modric but not over 10, 15, 20 yards Barella just turning the, the acceleration on now a long ball played forward again Ratspadori in pursuit on the far side Sotalo comes across and he's done well to win it back the Ajax defender and find Lovakovic who quickly transfers it to Guardiol on this near side so Croatia currently third in the group but their current position would not be enough to make them one of the four best third place teams even at this stage Austria, Slovakia and Hungary all have three points Slovenia are the other team at the moment of course with games still to play who are one of the third place teams who would make progress they've got two points of course they meet England tomorrow but Spain leading Albania at the moment Albania going out and as it stands, Croatia also going out unless they win this game. And Spain have won all 14 previous internationals when Ferran Torres has scored. So, well, it's ominous for Albania anyway, even without that stat. But it just shows their strength in depth as well. Tell 10 changes and they still take the lead. I thought that when I saw the lineup, I thought that just shows the strength of the Spanish squad. But Croatia having seen them in the first few games and in this game so far the build-up's terrific it's still got that slickness about it but maybe just lacking that killer instinct but now it's one back here is Pasalic inside the penalty area right-hand side jabbed out wide towards Stanisic the cross is deflected high in the air off Calafiori and into the arms of Donnarumma and that really is the problem for Croatia they won the ball back there in a high area but just didn't have the pace around the ball to really make enough of it no, Luciano Spalletti I think maybe has looked at that and gone well can they really hurt us if we sit into a, a defensive shape with three at the back and then we can maybe break and, and get that goal and then ask real questions of Croatia who are able to put two past Albania but Italy are a far better outfit and the Croatian fans seem to be in the majority inside the stadium in Leipzig the Italians were heavily outnumbered in the game we saw in Dortmund when they ultimately beat the Albanians it must have had 50,000 fans there and about another 250,000 it seemed came for the ride as well as Gvardia on this near side plays it all the way back towards Dominic Lovakovic wearing all orange the Croatian goalkeeper away to our right nil-nil here with 17 minutes played a draw enough for Italy but not enough for Croatia in the long term as DeMarco heads it forward now Pongracic goes back towards Lovakovic again he takes a touch with Rotegui in the vicinity hammers it forward Bastoni has been turned Pasalic will chase it back towards Donnarumma who has time to play it out towards Calafiori who scored the own goal against Spain and now DeMarco plays it down the line and Italy move themselves out of trouble swiftly there but now it's been given away Brozovic hooks it forward but Calafiori is there again to win it back it's still only his fifth appearance for Italy but he's played like a veteran at times during this tournament already yeah he really impressed in that in that first game obviously scoring the own goal on hell oh, nearly a mistake there from Pongracic and the referee's given a free kick yeah he was robbed by Retegui and then seemed to catch Retegui who has gone down 
clutching his face. Brozovic is complaining towards the referee. Rategui just trod on the ball initially, and then he was caught. It was Bongrakic's hip onto the side of Rategui's head as he slipped. It's a nasty clump on the side of the head. Yeah, it was a mistake initially from Bongrakic. Just the ball going under his foot, and then Rategui looked like he was away. He then miscontrols it, but then gets clattered, like you said, on the head. The referee had no option but to give a free kick there. And it's a free kick for Italy. It's a long way out, central area. 19 minutes played on Talk Sport. Croatia nil, Italy nil. Reminder, Spain leading Albania by a goal to nil. So, at the moment, Croatia would finish third in the group. But with only two points and a minus goal difference, that would not be enough to give them any hope, really, of qualifying for the round of 16. They have to win this game. Damian now on the halfway line from the free kick. Short to Barella. And now Jorginho. Don't forget Jamie O'Hara and Jason Candy up after us with the sports bar from 10 o'clock on Talk Sport chance for you to have your say on the night's action and also look ahead to England's final group game against Slovenia live on Talk Sport tomorrow night and that's Jason and Jamie on the sports bar coming up after this game well we've had 20 minutes of sparring haven't we between these two I think the Italians have realised that Croatia maybe don't have that threat and have got more comfortable now here is Pellegrini now left hand side of the penalty area found well by DeMarco Back to Calafiori, Jorginho takes over, midway inside the Croatian half. Wide to the left, and Calafiori, the high cross in, Rategui's header is just wide, and Lovakovic was rooted to the spot there. I don't think he had it covered, and Rategui inches away from the opening goal. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a terrific ball in from Calafiori, from that left-hand side, towards the back post, Gvardiol's up. Rategui gets a good grip of his shirt and a shove as well at the same time. Gets up really well. Helps himself on top of Guardiol. Looks to head it and you know it's close when it hits the stanchion behind the goal. A couple of inches past the post. And actually it's a, a corner that's been given. Rategui knew that it just glanced off Guardiol's head. But for that touch, I think that might have gone in as... Rotegui just has words with Danny McAlee, the referee. Well, I think he's asking whether it, you know, grazed off Gavardiol's arm. Well, hang on. I mean, you've got hold of his shirt and pulling him back and pushing him. What do you expect? Corner kick for Italy on this near side. Pellegrini and DeMarco are over it. It's left for Pellegrini, the outswinger, towards the near post, headed away by Brozovic as far as DeMarco. Infield again to Barella, but he will have to go all the way back to the halfway line and it's lofted high again looking for Pellegrini the volleyball back across the penalty area Rategui with a shot and it deflects high in the air off on Grakic and it's behind for another Italy corner superb reverse pass from Jorginho just waited for the run from Pellegrini who had taken the initial corner floated it over the top of the Croatian defence he volleyed it straight in you don't have time Rategui to take a touch and bring that down in a crowded area that was prime to be swivelled, side volleyed spectacularly in, and he just took yeah, too that's long. What you would have done absolutely, yeah. Calafiori is forward for this corner kick here for Italy. Midpoint of the first half on Talk Sport, nil nil in Leipzig as more missiles are thrown from the Croatian supporters behind that goal, and the corner is worked short to Pellegrini again, then back out towards the edge of the penalty area and the high cross towards the far post is beyond everybody and it was Bastoni who went down at the far post as Raspadori tried to pick him out I'm not sure there was too much contact and it will be a goal kick yeah and the ball was going to get nowhere near them either Raspadori with a really poor delivery from the uh, short corner but the Italians on top now after an initial bright start from Croatia starting to press a little higher the Italians Raspadori, a player that certainly has the trust of Spalletti as a former Napoli man as Croatia try and play the ball out on the far side and Sotalo has to scramble to avoid conceding a corner and Stanisic played a rather heavy ball back to him but now a long ball played forward for Croatia briefly Pasalic had the ball under control then Pellegrini wins it back Susic 
with a rather cheap free kick which will earn him a yellow card just inside the Croatian half now was it a yellow card I'm not sure it was it was a little clip on the on the heels of Pellegrini I guess you could say it was a half counter attack position a little unlucky there Mario Pasalic who had such a good end to the season in Italy with Atalanta winning the Europa League has been brought in by Croatia tonight and they need to see more of him further up the field as Jorginho plays it forward now looking for a tagway but Lavakovic does well to leave his penalty area and hammer the ball to safety once again terrific starting position from Lavakovic needed to be as well Rotegui was away I talked about that pace that he's got there was no way Sotalo was catching him his goalkeeper was there alive alert to clear 24 minutes played nil-nil here Spain leading Albania 1-0 Croatia have to win this game. A draw will be enough for Italy to go through as runners-up. Asusic plays it wide to the far side, looking for Kramaric. But the former Leicester man doesn't receive the ball because Bastoni nips him once again. and He can now carry the ball a long way up towards the halfway line, part of the inter-contingent in this Italian squad who won Serie A very comfortably this season. Now Calafiore who had such a good time with Bologna surprise qualifiers for the Champions League next season but merited on their start of play and their fearlessness at times as Italy patiently look to build again but they're having the time to pop the ball around that midfield area with Croatia really standing off and just waiting for the turnover ball but when they have it they don't really have the weapons to do too much with it as DeMarco plays the ball down the line left hand side Pellegrini though losing out to Sotalo infield to Modric on the stretch he's lost out quickly forward now to Retegui inside the penalty area his shot towards the near post is blocked by Pongracic and it's swooped upon by Lovakovic but Croatia here Dean have got a real problem yeah because of that higher press from the Italians a couple of mistakes creeping in from Croatia Passing towards Modric was overhit. Little slide ball down the side for Rotegui. Tried to take the shot on. Actually, decent defending in the end from Bongrakic. But still worrying signs at the moment for Croatia. Novakovic eventually parrying the ball behind as the corner kick and out swinger towards that near post headed away well though by Sotalo but controlled neatly on the edge of the penalty area Barella dinks a high ball in a free header for Bastoni tipped over the top superbly by Lovakovic to keep Croatia alive in the championships what a chance and then what a save this is from Lovakovic absolutely outstanding having to get across his goal because Barella is so cute with what he does fakes to shoot from the edge of the area stands it up towards Bastoni powerful header roof of the net Lovakovic is across to tip that over great reactions very similar to the sort of position Bastoni had for his equalising goal against Albania the corner played in again not cleared by Brozovic at the near post Pellegrini nods it back towards Calafiori who crumples under the challenge of Modric yes Modric inside the penalty area no free kick given then Bastoni does foul Kramaric midway inside the Croatian half it all gets a bit fractious around the ball with 27 minutes played. Danny Makele looking just to calm things down. It is still goalless in Leipzig, which won't be enough for Croatia. Spain still leading Albania by a goal to nil over on Talk Sport 2. That won't be enough for Albania either. Looking back, it's a wonderful chance, isn't it, for Bastoni? Of course, we have to give the credit to Lovakovic because it's a stunning save, but still a forward there or anyone who's worthy of being in that position to head and he took his goal in the first game so well it was the height to be saved anything low and back towards the opposite corner Lovakovic has got absolutely no chance it's a big chance for Italy and you're listening to Euro Game Day live on Talk Sport presented by Burger King bring home the ultimate food satisfaction get your favourites delivered now 28 minutes play, Croatia nil, Italy nil, Italy with the game's best opportunity so far. And the changes made in attack by Spalletti have been justified by the energy of Retegui and the 
No how of Raspadori, who is not a regular goal scorer himself, but does have that elusiveness as Kovacic looks to come forward now for Croatia, supported by Pasalic, but again Donnarumma has got time to sweep the ball to safety. But here is Gvardiol on this near side. Executes the Cruyff turn to evade Barella, but has to go all the way back to Lovakovic. Sharp as a spoon at the moment, Croatia's forward line. Really, really disappointing start to the game for them. When they've won the ball back, Kovacic and Modric has looked forwards. There's not been great movement. They've not got the better of their man. Pasalic, I've barely seen him touch the ball as yet. For a player with such talents, needs to get himself into the game. Susic had that long-range effort, but has barely been seen since. And it's a big issue for Croatia. Mozlatko well, Dalic has made four changes for this game but maybe looking towards his bench already and thinking what can I do but he doesn't have the likes of a Mandzukic or an Olic to throw on anymore as it's played into the penalty area by Modric Kramaric will control and play it back to the far side and Stanicic and now Modric again he does have Levita Olic on the bench but he's one of his coaches now Modric again wide on the far side back towards Susic and upon Grakic, half an hour played on Talk Sport. Nil nil. And the space here for Kramaric on the edge of the penalty area. Square towards Guardiol. The space to the right now. An opportunity for Susic to play in Modric. The low ball across the face of goal is pulled away by Bonaroma. And in the end, there's a miss kick inside the penalty area from Stanisic, which allows Italy to clear. But Croatia still have numbers forward here. Wide towards Kramaric down the right hand side. He comes in field onto that right foot. Back towards Modric now. Modric on the edge of the penalty area. The shot there was optimistic. Blocked by DeMarco. And it spins out of play on the far side for a Croatian throw in. That all started because of a fantastic run from Gvardiol. From that left back area. The, the likes of which we saw at the end of the season for Manchester City. Driving into a central position. Finding Modric eventually on the right. Who looked to whip that cross in. Just outnumbered in there. Croatia. Seven blue Italian shirts inside the penalty area to defend that cross and Josko Gvardiol a former Leipzig player knows this stadium very well but not too many happy memories for him so far tonight Croatia on their way out at the moment 31 minutes played nil nil here let's go back to Dusseldorf for the latest on the other game in Group B with Adrian Durham and here in Dusseldorf it's still Albania nil Spain one and it's a current Leipzig player who's created the goal Danny Olmo's through ball for Ferran Torres was brilliant the ball before it by Laporte out of the defence was absolutely majestic the finish from Torres superb as well they never lose when he scores they always win when he scores and Spain in control of this one Spain reserves that is Albania nil Spain one thanks Adrian 31 minutes played here still Croatia nil Italy nil Italy have only lost the final group stage game in a Euros once and that was when the Republic of Ireland beat them to qualify for the round of 16 back in 2016. Of course, the reigning champions, but six members of the team which started the final against England three years ago, not in the squad, of course. There have been retirements and also players falling out of favour. And five players from Spalletti's first game in charge against North Macedonia back in September also weren't picked. Shiro Amobili was his captain for the first game scored the goal and has now not been selected he was very quickly deemed to be surplus to requirements and finding a consistent striker has been a thorny issue for Spalletti as Gvardiol now plays a poor ball forward Brozovic on the stretch though does well to win it back from Pellegrini and Croatia have an overload down the left hand side Modric picking out Pasalic now Pasalic just checks his run to stay on side whips in the cross it's Headed away by Damian. Nodded further clear by DeMarco. Susic does well to win it back. Now Stanisic. Back to Brozovic, but he's crowded out. Gives the ball away again. And it will be a throw-in to Italy on the far side. Their left. And that's just a couple of times, though. They've been able to overload the right-hand side. Luka Modric drifting across from his midfield position. And Stanisic and Susic over on that side as well. And they've just been able to create an opening to look to get that ball into the box but they don't look like they're going to get on the end of it I think the Italians will be happy to see crosses coming in from wide areas 
Croatia have not failed to win a group game in a major championship since the last time they were in Germany in the World Cup back in 2006. But that's the scenario facing them at the moment and also an early flight home. As they give up possession cheaply on this near side again, it will be an Italian free kick for the challenge on Raspadori. Damian back towards Bastoni and quickly into the feet of Jorginho. Too easy, far too easy for Bastoni just to play that ball either side of Kramaric for Jorginho to turn and have 15 yards of space. And that is because Modric, Brozovic and Kovacic will not go out and press particularly well and give you that space to play through and it gives you an issue then as a defensive unit when it's all of a sudden players are turning and looking at your back line looking to play through and over the top of you Guardiola is smiling on this near side but he's body checked Di Lorenzo and it will be a free kick for Italy on their right about 10 yards inside the Croatian half Brexford's returning tomorrow on talk sport from six for Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoist and they'll be joined by a host of guests, including the former England winner, winger Ashley Young, who played at the World Cup in 2018. Ricky Lambert will also be on the show, building up to England's final group game against Slovenia. Breakfast tomorrow from six o'clock on Talk Sport with Jeff Stelling and Ali McCoist. And still Lorenzo plays it forward now for Italy on this near side, but Vardio wins it back, but only momentarily. Raspadori lofts it wide to DeMarco who gets there before Susic on the left now Calafiori with the long hair tied back by the Alice band quickly into the feet of Pellegrini inside the penalty area low shot from him a sharp effort right footed on the turn but it's gathered comfortably by Lovakovic so comfortable Calafiori getting forwards isn't he drifting there he has obviously played left back so it's not an unusual position to find himself in but still a lovely little run inside and played into Pellegrini who swivelled and actually the shot didn't look on which is why it almost caught out Lovakovic but comfortable save in the end down to his left hand side well, Croatia have lost to the eventual winners in four of the last six major tournaments they played in and of course they've already been beaten by Spain here and who knows that run could be extended losing to Spain was maybe not a surprise but drawing with Albania in the circumstances in which they did was a real blow but here is Pasalic now on this near side the left the cross driven in deflected behind off Barella, and Croatia have a corner with nine minutes to play in the first half here on TalkSport sloppy play from the Italians but there was just a tiny little glimpse of Luka Modric and the quality he has ball came up around hip height and he just stuck out that right wand of his with the outside of his right foot and just pierced it out towards Pasalic who took a little bit too long but won a corner corners played short by Modric towards Susic back towards Modric again opens out the angle for the cross deep to the far post but clever defending there by DeMarco to just block the run from Pasalic and in the end the ball has gone high and wide and behind for a goal kick yeah there's no doubt Luka Modric hasn't lost that ability he may be a fraction slower but the quality still there outside of the right foot pass out wide and then that delivery was very good it's just the players weren't particularly ready and got blocked off but will his 178th appearance for Croatia be his last in a major championship Barella forward now on this near side looking for a tegue but good defending from Pongracic to find his goalkeeper once again and here is Brozovic, now a teammate of Cristiano Ronaldo with Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia. Sotalo on the far side. And once again, Croatia enjoying long spells of uninterrupted possession, but they are creating very little apart from the early shot from Susic, which forced an excellent save from Donnarumma. Yeah, it's the only effort they've had, and the Italians have had six since then. They're happy to sit off and let them have that possession at the back and in midfield without really hurting them. And then they've looked very good when they've won the ball and used the width very well. If Italy get this draw, they'll be playing the Swiss in the round of 16. Potentially 
England in the quarterfinals if they win their group. Of course, England playing Slovenia live on Talk Sport tomorrow night. Serbia against Denmark will be over on Talk Sport too. The Talk Sport Network, the only place you can hear every single game from the UEFA Euro 2024. As it's in again towards Jorginho in Italy, looking to be more, more expansive now. Di Lorenzo heads the ball in field, but Radio does well just to provide an injection of pace and cushion the header back towards Lovakovic midway inside the Croatian half. Oh, he's rapid, Gradiol. He clocked one of the fastest sprints in the Premier League. Season just gone. He's got that under the bonnet when he's needed. And maybe that's why he's playing once again in the wider area tonight to give them that attacking outlet. But at the moment, Croatia are finding it very difficult to pick him out in advanced areas as Italy look to come forward themselves now. Pellegrini on the far side, but Stanisic comes across to clear the ball away the final touch was off a lunging Pellegrini and it will be a throw in to Croatia on this near side as we close in on half time in Leipzig on Talk Sport in Dusseldorf Spain still leading Albania by a goal to nil the first time Albania have conceded the opening goal in the competition so far they have led for the longest in the tournament without winning a game they were ahead against Croatia for over an hour in that chaotic 2-2 draw but it's tough for Slovenia's team at the moment they need two goals against Spain to have any hope of going through I'm just looking at the Italians when they do win the ball back Pellegrini's been the one that surged forwards Barella not so much but Pellegrini a couple of times now has got himself in between Stanic and Sotalo been a threat from that position Gradio on this near side plays it forward looking for Kramaric but coming across to win it back is Bastoni and then DeMarco will find Donnarumma once again yeah we just saw Kramaric's head just pop out of Bastoni's pocket there for a moment he has just been physically bullied so far by the Italian defender albeit Kramaric hasn't exactly had much quality and support in that forward area like I said Pasalic and Susic have not been particularly good at getting up there and helping him especially when you've got three centre-backs you're up against you've got to make that effort to run close to the forward and even beyond him if you can foot up on the halfway line from Sotalo on Retegui so it will be a free kick for Italy with three and a half minutes in the first half to play on Talk Sport, nil-nil in Leipzig and Italy at the moment are inching their way towards the round of 16 and a meeting with Switzerland who were so close to winning that group last night, Group A could have been Italy against Germany in the round of 16 had Niklas Fulkrug not scored in the closing moments now Brozovic coming forward now for Croatia again wide towards the right of Modric maybe thought about the early cross but comes in field Susic on the edge of the penalty area tries to pick his way through some heavy Italian traffic and it's Jorginho who comes away with the ball and really Croatia won't find too much joy trying to burrow their way down the centre against this Italian backline yeah Susic wanting to get that shot off again by just chopping the ball past the defender it was a sloppy bit of work though and there's no doubt that Dalic will be looking at his options those two Susic and Palasic have been pretty poor so far and he's got Lovro Meyer on the bench Antti Budmir came on and made a difference against Albania as Kramaric has it now on the far side, tries to play the ball in field to Modric, but it's quickly cut out, and Italy have the opportunity to break over the halfway line. Di Lorenzo on this near side. But again, Italy just choosing to be conservative with a small C, and Di Lorenzo checks back in field, and Italy are just content to regain and maintain possession around the halfway line with 90 seconds of the first half to play. 
Here is Jorginho once again. A walking pace with no challenge whatsoever from the Croatians. You almost get the feeling they're trying to stay in the game and maybe they'll give it the big one in the last 10 or 15 minutes, but it may be too late by then. Yeah. Yeah, they've been comfortable Italy, haven't they? They've allowed, obviously, Croatia some possession, but they've looked very comfortably defensively and actually they've had enough going forwards, albeit it's not like they've particularly played with any intensity, the Italians. Well, their brains were scrambled by the way Spain picked them apart time and time again in the second group game, but they had the opportunity to really soothe one or two egos here and, and have a reset because Croatia aren't really offering the sort of challenge they need to in a match they have to win as Gradiol goes back into his penalty area one or two pyrotechnics are let off by the Croatian supporters behind that goal away to the right and the smoke and the cordite is beginning to drift across the field into the nostrils of the players the Croatian supporters along with their Albanian counterparts were given warnings for fireworks and smoke bombs during the second group game along with one or two other things as well as Gvardio plays the ball in field towards Sotalo and we're into a single minute at the end of the first half here on Talk Sport and once again it seems both teams are fairly content playing for half time and I think both teams recognise how much things can change with just the one goal doesn't it and there's a bit of tentativeness from both sides now an opportunity for Brozovic inside the penalty area Pasovic played the ball in that's the first run we've seen from the Croatian midfield into the penalty area it was beyond Brozovic but they will need much more of that in the second half well he's capable of it he's got a terrific fitness levels as Brozovic and he's capable of making those runs into the penalty area. Like you said, that's the first one we've seen. Rarely, rarely see it from Kovacic and, and even Modric, beyond the defence, that is. Well, that's half-time. One really good chance to either side each. Donnarumma with an excellent early save to keep out the shot from Susic. And at the other end, the close-range header from Bastoni was tipped over superbly by... Lavakovic, but really that's about it Italy have carried more of a threat of course a point will do for them Croatia have to win this game to have any hope of going through to the round of 16 but at the moment they've been blunted and look rather blunt at half time it is Croatia nil Italy nil well, I'll talk to uh, Dean Ashton about that first half in just a second. Let me round up what's happened here in Dusseldorf because it's half time here as well. And Spain, frankly, have been brilliant. The goal is absolutely world class. They lead 1 0 against Albania. Left sided centre half, Americ Laporte, feeds one through the middle of the pitch to Olmo. It's a pass that takes out four Albanian players. Brilliant vision. And then Danny Olmo, the number 10 who plays for Leipzig, who's not been fully fit, but he is superb, turns on the ball and pokes one through. Ferran Torres on the run from right wing inside the box on the diagonal, meets it, opens up his body, curls in a low left footer that nestles in the net, in off the post. Spain have gone from their centre half in their own half to the back of the Albanian net with two genius passes and a finish to get you out of your seat. Brilliant, brilliant football from Spain. Ferran Torres, the former Man City winger, five goals in major tournaments for his country. That's impressive by the age of 24. Danny Olmo, though, has been the main man for me. He's a dream of a player. Should have scored a second, but Albania captain Jim Shitty denied him with a goal-saving tackle at close range. Torres went close again with a header five minutes before the break, but it flew over. Marino spooned one over after a brilliant Spain move down the left-hand side. Albania, no efforts on or off target until the 45th minute when David Raya threw himself to his left to keep out Aslani's long-range shot but they have been game they've been physical as well they've been aggressive I mean there was a slight scare from David Raya the Arsenal keeper in goal for Spain he smashed a clearance against the back of his own defender under no pressure was lucky to see it loop back into his hands but the way Spain have played shows they have strength in depth they've controlled this game and if they continue bossing it and win it De La Fuentes will have a fully confident and fully brilliant squad at his disposal going into the knockout stages. Spain don't just have brilliant youngsters. They don't just have a brilliant 11. They have a superb squad, a potentially 
Euros winning squad. At half time in Dusseldorf, then it is Albania nil, Spain won. But we're still waiting for the breakthrough in Leipzig, Dean Ashton. And there's one little quote from you in your commentary I've got to throw back at you because it made me chuckle here in Dusseldorf. Croatia's attack, sharp as a spoon. What's going wrong for them? Well, the, obviously, the players they've picked in Susic, Pasalic, and, and Kramaric have offered so little. When you think they've actually had a decent amount of possession, Modric, Kovacic have both won the ball back or had the ball in a decent area, and they've offered so little. And I'm not just talking about when the ball's gone into them, where they've been quite sloppy. I'm t- in terms of runs beyond or, or runs to try and draw defenders away and open up space for each other, it, very individual, all of those three performances from the forward players. Um very very strange it's just been one long range effort that is all they've really offered and you can see Modric is trying everything he can to create angles and and passing lanes and he's probably thinking why am I bothering these three are offering very little in terms of movement and endeavor and effort to try and just do something different to to draw defenders out it's been so easy for the Italians it has, and the really brilliant chance came from the really brilliant Barella cross. I mean, he's such a good player when he's on form, Barella. Bastoni's had a terrific save to keep it at nil-nil. That was a brilliant opportunity for Italy, well-fashioned by Barella. It's stunning, wasn't it? It, it? We rarely see that kind of craft. From that position, he wasn't really wide. He was, he was tucked in a, a great shooting position just outside the area, but recognised because of his vision that they had an extra player at the back post, chipped it over the top for for Bastone he should score you know let, let's get it right he needs to score he needs to head that down and back into the empty space the other side of uh, Lavakovic but take nothing away once it's in that position for a goalkeeper to shuffle his feet across and make a stunning save up high when it's flashed so quickly towards him was brilliant superb stuff but it's Croatia nil Italy nil over in Leipzig uh, on TalkSport 2, there's commentary of uh, the game here in Dusseldorf. I'm bringing you reports on Albania, nil. Spain won. Group B looks like this. Spain were already through, uh, but they are top with nine points as things stand. Italy will qualify in second on only four points. As it stands, Croatia with this draw have two points. Albania will be uh, going home with one point. Croatia will be joining them. That probably won't be enough for them to be one of the uh, best uh, third-place finishers four of which go through to the knockout stages. So Croatia have it all to do, and so do Albania here in Dusseldorf. You're with the TalkSport Network at Euro 2024. Euro Game Day Live, delivered by TalkSport with Burger King. Get the ultimate food satisfaction this halftime with the flame-grilled bacon double cheeseburger XL. Order now on the Burger King app. It's the most wonderful time of the year. On the beach, on the beach, on the beach. Booking geniuses, save your summer. Get a wiggle on and book yourself a bargain with On the Beach. Big budget or small, we've got a mega holiday for all. Should have been a rapper. On the beach, boot like a genius, holiday like a fool. Battle protected. On the beach. This tournament, prepare for greatness with William Hill. Get ready for last minute winners, legendary goals and straight red cards. Oh, what was he thinking? Win 50% more on every England game this tournament with Bet Builder Extra, online or in the app, only from William Hill. Available day before match to kickoff. Bet Builders are three plus selections at three to one or more. Pre match singles, match stake 20 pounds. Full T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. Let's go live to hear about that winning goal. The crowd's gone absolutely wild here. How on earth do you sum up your emotions right now? Amazing. A hat trick is just the best feeling ever. Is it though? Is kicking a ball into the back of the net really better than food filament from Burger King? That warm, fuzzy feeling of total food satisfaction, like finishing the last bite of a Gourmet King's barbecue steakhouse Angus. Uh, no. 
Correct. Burger King. That's food fulment. This Euros, the Sun is bringing you all the gossip, goals, and giants of the game. Get insights and analysis from Harry, should have been England manager, Redknapp, Jack, the maestro, Wiltshire, Gordon, no nonsense, Strachan, and Jurgen, the winner, Klinsmann. Euro want to miss it. Don't miss out. Only in the Sun. Well, you can see why people are talking about Asda, can't you? Of course, on paper, Asda have a great lineup with two for seven pound on Coke eight packs. Then there's pizza price drops, including the talented spicy chicken fajita flavour and classic four cheese deep dish were three pounds each now two pounds each and don't forget the dependable garlic flatbread was one pound eighty now one pound fifty what a lineup get match ready at asda this summer asda that's more like it selected stores and lines subject to availability coke 330 mil four pound 25 each pizzas and flatbread end 17th of july may exclude express and small stores see asda.com slash small stores here she is the three-time world champion what has she got in store for us today Things are starting to heat up. Here she goes. Triple builders, double stir. I don't believe it. And a chocolate digestive to finish it off. A thing of beauty. You have to say, the judges are going to love this one. British Gas, powering home fans during this summer of sport. Create your avatar. Pwn your first news. Enjoy your newfound power. Climb the leaderboard. Dominate the leaderboard. Listen to people scream your game attack. Kirsty underscore 26. Kirsty underscore 26. Kirsty underscore 26. For less. Selected IKEA gaming setups are now at a new lower price, along with thousands of other products. IKEA, the wonderful everyday. Game over. Euro Game Day Live on Talk Sport with Carling, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. On 1089 and 1053 Medium Wave, on DAB, online, and on your smart speaker. Official broadcast of UEFA Euro 2024, Germany. Talk Sport. Half-time highlights on Talk Sport with Carly, the UK's number one lager. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. Croatia, realistically, this is a match they must win or they will be going home. A defeat for the Italians and a shock win for Albania against Spain and the Azzurri will also be on the first flight back to Rome tomorrow morning. Croatia come forward now and a shot fired in and it's tipped over by Donnarumma. The high cross in, Retegui's header is just wide and Lovakovic was rooted to the spot there. I don't think he had it covered. Morella dinks a high ball in, a free header for Bastoni. Tipped over the top superbly by Lovakovic to keep Croatia alive in the championships. So it's Albania nil, Spain 1 and live here on Talk Sport. It is Italy nil, Croatia nil, Croatia and Albania. As things stand, heading home. It's Spain already through and Italy will be joining them. That's the halftime highlights. Thanks to Carling. 18 plus, please drink responsibly. Halftime highlights on Talk Sport with Carling. The UK's number one lager. 18 plus, always drink responsibly. Uh, Jeff Sterling and Ali McCoy on Talk Sport Breakfast tomorrow from 6am among the guests. Ashley Young, who played under Gareth Southgate at the World Cup in 2018. We're going to hear from Gareth Southgate very shortly. Let's look at the latest odds, all thanks to William Hill. In the zone on Talk Sport with William Hill. Prepare for greatness with William Hill. 18 plus gambleaware.org. So goalless in Leipzig, Croatia to win it 12 to 5. The draw 7 to 5. Italy 7 to 4. And Nico Barella to score or assist is now enhanced to 4 to 1. He's looked the man most likely. That was a look at the latest odds. Thanks to William Hill. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. Be gambleaware.org. In the zone on Talk Sport with William Hill. Prepare for greatness with William Hill. 18 plus gambleaware.org. So as it stands tonight with the scores as they are, and if they stay that way, England will be through to the round of 16. Albania are losing. Uh, but they have the chance to win Group C when they take on Slovenia in Cologne tomorrow night. And, of course, TalkSport will be there. Now, at England's press conference earlier this evening, Gareth Southgate provided an injury update on Luke Shaw. Here's what the England boss had to say. Yeah, Luke's the only one that is not really available. Um, he'll possibly um, change with the team tomorrow, but uh, he's not he's not quite ready to be involved in the game yet. Uh, it's uh, Gareth Southgate. Uh, with his views on Luke Shaw, the news rather, that Luke Shaw is not going to be ready. Uh, Dean Ashton, 
former England striker. Let's just uh, focus on this again. And actually, let me ask the question, is there too much focus on this? It's a left-back that's not even playing at the moment. Should there not be more focus on the players that are playing? Yes, yes, there should be. But I think it shows um, probably how unbalanced we've seemed and, and how much a difference that type of left-back can bring. I watched uh, Nuno Mendes for Portugal just overlap after overlap, allowing... Rafael Leao to shine and we are missing that overlapping fullback there's no doubt about that but luckily Aid, I've got a masters in injuries and rehab and I'm afraid I'm sorry when you've been out that long even if he is they call him fit he's not going to be right not for this elite level you know it just it doesn't happen I, I, I thought it was a massive surprise that he came along when there was other players that had played well in the Premier League um, who, who, who play left back you know Tyreek Mitchell being being one of them um, why you wouldn't bring a, a proper left back that you could use if needed it, it was a big surprise to me um, Tyreek Mitchell towards the end of the season was playing as a left wing back so was Alfie Doughty at Luton whose numbers were sensational from that position by the way Dan Burner, a left back for Newcastle. Ben Chilwell hadn't been fit either. There were options there, but Soma's left wing backs. If he knows he wants to play a four, then maybe you can understand why he didn't want to bring a, a left wing back who usually plays in a five. I just think it's the it's the balance and actually it's the the um, confidence. I think to be able to push forwards, you know, players like Foden or Saka or Gordon, you know, or Palmer, all of these type of players they would benefit massively from players that can overlap, that can take defenders away, that can open up space for them to uh, utilise and, 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 and be able to produce their, their best football. It's not just that you, you, know, you stand there and defend as a, as a left-back. Dean, as well, uh, could I also ask you, if you've got a right-footed left-back, if you're Phil Foden, you want someone to slide the ball down the line to you quickly on the outside... Kieran Trippier maybe can't do that, so you're not getting the best out of Foden by simply not having a left-footed player behind him. No, it just it looked stuck. It looked uh, rigid. It didn't look like it was giving very much. Obviously, we saw the goal came from the opposite side where, where Kyle Walker was steaming down the, the right-hand side. So I, I think it is an issue. It might not be an issue all of the time, but I think certainly in that last game, it was so noticeable that we were very stuck on on that side because of the uh, because of the imbalance and the lack of confidence of of Trippier getting forwards. Uh, here in Dusseldorf, the Spain and Albania players are out there, balls on the centre spot, and they're ready to get the second half underway. Spain leading by a goal to nil. The commentary of this one's on Talksport Two with Jim Proudfoot and Stuart Pierce to get Talksport Two. Just download the Talksport app; it's free to download, easy to use as well you can swipe between TalkSport and TalkSport 2 loads of music stations there from Virgin and also Times Radio and Talk for your election coverage as well so that's on TalkSport 2 commentary of Albania now Spain one I'll be bringing you updates from this game as well I think Italy are going to make a change and Croatia need to change the scoreline in Leipzig it's Croatia nil Italy nil second half live here on TalkSport with Dean Ashton and Nigel Adley Yes, thank you, Adrian. Davide Fratesi is the player who will be coming on for Italy. He's been warming up throughout half-time and is now stripped and ready for action. Of course, he started the two previous games. Yet another player from Inter. Four Inter players started this game and another one is about to join us and he scored the two crucial goals to beat Ukraine in the qualifiers and it's Pellegrini who is coming off, so five Inter players now on the field at the start of the second half for Italy and if Pellegrini doesn't have an injury, Dean, that's a bit of a surprise I think there must be an issue I thought he was reasonably good in that first half he was the one player that was trying to burst forwards so maybe there is a slight issue there for Pellegrini and also a change for Croatia, we mentioned him in the first half Ante Budmir of Osasuna and he is coming on to replace the Atalanta player Mario Pasalic. So there is the attacking change for Croatia from Dalic right at the start of the second half. That was needed. I thought Pasalic was um, was really really poor. I've been impressed with him at Atalanta and just never got into the game really. So Italy about to start the second half. Their team now is Donnarumma in goal. The back three. 
Damian, Calafiori and Bastoni. Di Lorenzo and Di Marco are the wing backs. Jorginho and Barella holding in midfield with Raspadori, Retegui. And of course, the recently arrived Fratesi in attack. The Croatian team, Lovakovic in goal, Stanisic, Sutalo, Pongracic and Gvardiol, the back four. Modric, Brozovic and Kovacic in midfield. It's now Susic, Kramaric and Budmir in attack. They're also back underway over on Talk Sport 2 in Dusseldorf. Spain leading Albania by a goal to nil as Italy tried to attack right at the start of the second half, but it's volleyed away by Lovakovic with Retegri looking to fasten on to a long ball forward. And Italy playing from right to left, wearing all blue. At the moment, going through in second place with four points to meet Switzerland in the round of 16. And potentially, if England win their group tomorrow night, they would be on course to meet in the quarter-finals. And with Albania failing to beat Spain at the moment, losing 1-0, England, France and the Netherlands are guaranteed a place in the round of 16, even if it's via third place. Now Barella for Italy, midway inside the Croatian half. Always seems to have time on the ball and he plays it all the way back to Damian. And now Bastone again. And quickly poked forward by Rasmadone. Retegui down the left, finding DeMarco. And DeMarco's got time to find Calafiori again. And once again he's forward and in Italy are uh, working the ball around very sweetly here. And Croatia, who have to win this game, a draw won't be enough doing plenty of chasing at the start of the second half but now they win it back and now they can counter attack with Guardiol the ball wide to the right hand side and Budmir he's got support from Susic Susic now inside the penalty area back to Modric Modric challenged initially by Barella but wide to Stanisic the cross in is very deep way too deep one bounce out of play on the far side for a throw in oh that was a, a real chance again a brilliant break interception and then sprinting forwards Gvardiol it was just over hit into Burramir otherwise he would have been in with a chance in front of Donnarumma but it just went ahead of him and then it went, when it was recycled back Stanisic awful cross throw in for Italy on the far side Fratesi the player who has just come on challenged by Kovacic and he's now rather hemmed in by the corner flag but manages to poke it out towards Di Lorenzo who then catches Kramaric and it's a free kick here for Croatia much better than a corner down their left hand side Di Lorenzo catching Kramaric although I think he made the most of it but this an opportunity to get Sotalo and Gvardiol forward and will a set piece give Croatia a route back into Euro 2024 the collapsing of a deck chair springs to mind there with Kramaric just knees collapsed back arched to win that free kick but he's gone out to the left hand side since the substitution Modric with the free kick looking for Budimir headed away by Calafiori a high bouncing ball comes back out to Modric down the left who looks to find Gvardiol who's quick enough to keep the ball in play challenged by Di Lorenzo but here is Modric again Modric with a good ball to find Kramaric flick back to Susic inside the penalty area Kramaric trying to execute a Cruyff turn goes down then manages to stab the ball across the face of goal beyond Budimir and it's brought clear by DeMarco on this near side and DeMarco's got pace as well seemed to carry the ball out of play and that's what he did and Croatia with four minutes played in the second half on Chalksport have a throw in on this near side but the early signs in the second half for them are better and again it's Modric involved tight down that left hand side just a little acceleration and then reverse pass into Kramaric look for the Croy flick in towards Susic came back to Kramaric who worked incredibly hard to even get the opening for the cross and he landed it at the back post no one was there three players at the near post Modric now he was caught again by Barella but manages to find Stanisic Susic coming in field to find Pongracic and now Kovacic and Sotalo finding Croatia who are snapping the ball around with a bit more crispness since half time and clearly Slatko Dalic has said look it's now or never had to change didn't it it was a 
a nothing performance really from Croatia in that in that first half with a slight change and Modric really looking to hug this right hand side trying to find the space to operate in because that middle part of the pitch that Italy have got covered at the moment well, Croatia have been specialists at reaching World Cup semi-finals in recent years and of course the final back in 2018 but they've never won a knockout game at the Euros and they won't get the opportunity this season if they don't win this game now Stanicic on this near side fighting Modric again over on TalkSport 2 Spain still leading it Albania by a goal to Nils Modric tries to feed it through to Kramaric but the ball was over hit skips away from him and it's claimed by Donnarumma defending the Italian goal away to our right but they're the ones that are being proactive again Croatia without without again having the players at the top end of the pitch that are going to frighten you and the Italians still looking reasonably comfortable albeit not really got going themselves yet the current state of Group B Spain on top with nine points Italy second with four Croatia with two and Albania with a single point and with two points and a minus three goal difference that is not enough for Croatia Brozovic with the cross into the penalty area right through the six yard box claimed at the far side by Kramaric Kramaric now looking to work the space for the shot it's deflected appeals for handball strong appeals for handball inside the penalty area the ball bobbles behind and Danny Makili says let's just take a moment Rob Diperink is the VAR oh it hits the hand of Fratesi and it was some way from his body yeah this will be looked at for sure he just turned his back with his right arm tucked in towards his body but his left arm hanging out dangling there the ball struck it as it was going towards that far corner Danny Makili in conversation with Rob Diperink the Croatian supporters behind that goal are making it very clear what they think and a VAR check for a potential penalty is now being assessed by the Dutch officials Danny Makili was the VAR for the World Cup final and he is going across to the screen to take a look for himself and I'm pretty sure this will be given we've seen it throughout this season if one arm is just outreach just dangling there in the air and if it gets struck especially with a shot going towards the far corner I'd be amazed if this isn't given he's watching the replay that we're watching at the moment a curling shot from Kramaric and Fratesi pulled away very quick look from Makili he's back onto the field of play and he's given the penalty to Croatia well they've started strongly in the second half but that's a massive bonus a real bonus for Croatia Fratesi the half-time substitute just dangles an arm out and when you do that it means if it gets struck the referee pretty much doesn't have an option but to give the penalty Luka Modric will take it Gianluigi Donnarumma of course made those saves in the final at Wembley three years ago to earn Italy the European Championships now he will try and deny European football's old stager all the responsibility on the slight shoulders of Luka Modric what a moment for Croatia Modric right footed save by Donnarumma he guessed right it was a weak penalty and has Croatia's opportunity pass them by brilliant save he picks the right way Donnarumma there's pace on the side foot from Luka Modric but he just looks absolutely huge in the goal doesn't he the Italian goalkeeper how many times is he going to save his country now Susic with the cross into the penalty area again a great save from Donnarumma Modric is there and Modric has scored and a minute after he's missed the penalty Luka Modric fires the ball high into the net and Croatia do have their goal and it could be the goal to send them through to the round of 16 and keep their dreams alive and consign Italy to the lottery of third place the Croatian supporters are jubilant what a moment in Leipzig it is Croatia 1, Italy 0 well he was in there sulking he hadn't really moved 
from the penalty spot, Luka Modric. He was so downbeat because he'd missed that penalty. But what a ball in. Susic with a stunning, in-swinging cross from the right-hand side. Budimir with a touch, a great save from Donnarumma to start with. He's absolutely furious because first to react was Luka Modric. He aimed absolutely sure just to lift it at the last second, smashing it high into the roof of the net and wheels away and celebrates. What a bonus for Luka Modric. 54 minutes, Luka Modric misses a penalty. 55 minutes, he scores. And Croatia lead Italy by a goal to nil. And at the moment, they will be going through in second place. And Italy are down to third with a minus one goal difference. And they will be jittery. It's incredible, isn't it? How one goal can change things at this stage of the tournament already. Luka Modric cannot believe his look stood there motionless in the penalty area thinking I've missed the big chance I've let my teammates down I've got all the experience and then he turns around again the ball's being swung in and he reacts quickest and then he's got the calmness and the coolness just to make sure in those positions he doesn't smash it he just lifts it over the top of Donnarumma who's coming out and spreading himself 33 seconds between the penalty miss (laughs) and the goal Amazing. DeMarco is now going off, and no surprise, Chiesa is coming on for Italy. Spalletti reacting straight away, throwing on the attacking talent from Wembley three years ago, and Italy here are in a bit of a hole as they come forward straight from the kickoff with Chiesa. His first touch. Is a cross into the penalty area. Chiesa now looking to find Damian Fratesi, who gave the way the penalty is challenged by Sotalo, and it's behind for a corner. And after a fairly soporific first half, what a game we have now. Yeah, the goal was always going to do that, wasn't it? Because it was going to change the mindset of the Italians and certainly the Croatians. And a change of shape as well, Italy to a back four. Corner from Raspadone, fisted away at the far post by Lovakovic. Croatia 1, Italy 0 on Talk Sport. 57 minutes played. Croatia are going through in second place at the moment. Italy will be down to third. The third place teams at the moment, Austria, who played two games, have three points and a plus one goal difference. Slovakia have three points and a zero goal difference. Hungary, of course, have played all of their games. They have three points and a minus three goal difference. And Italy on three points with a minus one goal difference. And that knocks Slovenia out. But of course, they play Denmark tomorrow. Or or rather, they play England tomorrow, of course. Denmark playing Serbia. Of course, there is so much to happen. At the moment, Hungary are sat in their training camp, having got their win over Scotland last night. They may have to wait until Wednesday night to see if they're still in the competition. And Italy could now be in a similar scenario. Yeah, absolutely. All of a sudden, the mindset of the Italians has changed. The urgency of their play has changed. That back four now with Jorginho and Barella sitting. Chiesa on the right, Raspadori on the left, Rotesi in behind. Rotegui. And they're going to have to go for it and maybe leave gaps for Croatia to try and pick them off. Modric at 38 years old and 289 days the oldest scorer in Euro history of course Pepe could overtake him at any stage Bastoni now with a long ball forward for Italy note of desperation about their play already still half an hour of normal time to play Chiesa wide to this near side and Damian over on Talk Sport 2 Spain still leading Albania by a goal to nil but here is Brozovic now finding Kovacic on the breakaway Kovacic looking to carry the ball a long distance believes he was hauled to the ground by Barella but no free kick given and now Fratesi was caught late by Modric and Modric will get a yellow card to add to his goal oh we've got a game now we've got a game now first of all Jorginho almost dragged Kovacic back to have his own yellow card and then Modric goes steaming in towards Fratesi doesn't actually catch him that much it's more of a trailing leg but still Stops a counter-attack. 
Let's go to Dusseldorf and see what's happening between Spain and Albania. And has the atmosphere changed there following that Croatia goal? Here's Adrian Durham. Well, the Albania fans are going absolutely wild. There's pyro in there and they're bouncing up and down. But it's still Albania nil. Spain won. They know about the goal at your game in Leipzig. But they've got to get a couple of goals here. They are playing better in this second half. Amanda Breuer has come on as well. But it's still Albania nil. Spain won. But if Albania do score twice, unlikely as it seems... Italy would be out, out here tonight as a cross into the near post is hammered behind by Pongracic. It was Chiesa's ball in again and it's a corner kick for Italy and Chiesa now will be doing what he did against Albania. Ball out of the feet in as quickly as possible. Yeah, he's a terrific player, isn't he, off that right-hand side. Really positive when he gets it, whether that's to cross early or to try and dribble. Corner kick for Italy on the far side, a goal down. Headed in at that near post by Bastoni, but too high. And it will be a goal kick. 61 minutes played here on TalkSport. You're listening to Euro Game Day Live, presented by Carling, the UK's number one lager, 18+. plus. Please drink responsibly. What a story in Leipzig. Croatia 1, Italy 0. Thanks to Luka Modric. 33 seconds after he missed the penalty, he scored the goal, and Italy could be finishing third in the group and no wonder Spalletti is pacing around his technical area like an impatient grandfather at the park yeah, he's anxious because yes they set themselves up to be defensive and it was always going to be a risk but then once you get yourselves into this position he realises they have to have it in their own hands and look they've got plenty of time still of course they have as 30 plus minutes I'm sure left in this game but Bastoni missing another opportunity with his head a little bit unsighted the ball just came past Sutalo and he had to split second header to make and put it over the bar now Chiesa on the far side there'll be a problem now for Gradiol and Chiesa against Gradiol could be the key confrontation in the remainder of this game two real speedsters and Gradiol got their first at the expense of a throw-in on this occasion. Yeah, I think he'll have the edge, actually. Gavardiol, in terms of pace. Chies is quick, but he's more of a dribbler. Modric's first international goal came against Italy in Livorno in a friendly back in 2006. That was Italy's first defeat as world champions when Croatia beat them. His 26th here tonight and it could be the goal which sends Croatia through at Italy's expense for now now Jorginho waving his arms on the ball at the lack of movement and lack of options ahead of him well and Croatia have really sat in now in their shape there's no urgency about their play they've got themselves into the position they wanted and the Italians looking very frustrated Chiesa having a go now at his midfield Increasingly, the victory at the Euros three years ago looks more of an anomaly. Since they won the World Cup in Germany in 2006, they've gone out in the group twice. They failed to qualify twice. Of course, they won the Euros under Mancini, but they've not been very good since. They were laboured in qualifying, losing twice to England, and they've been laboured here, really, played well in patches against Albania deserved to win that game schooled by the Spanish and having shown a lack of real ambition here tonight for so many moments in the first half now they've been caught out and they've got to chase the game here is Chiesa down the right hand side looking to take on Gvardiol once again the cross deflected behind off Gvardiol and it will be a corner kick for Italy 64 minutes play Croatia lead 1-0 on Talk Sport Spain still a goal up over on Talk Sport 2. He's already made a difference, hasn't he? Federico Chiesa. They're getting that ball out to him quickly. He's driving it. Vardial. Won another corner. So direct when he plays. Corner in towards that near post. Looking for Bastone. Cleared away. As far as Chiesa. Now Darmian with the cross in. Headed away by Brozovic at the near post. No elevation on the cross at all from the former Manchester United player. And there's a real frenetic air about those Italian blue shirts at the moment. They are panicking. I mean, again, you sort of think, well, where, where was this intensity? 
you know, get yourselves 1-0 ahead. They had the chance in the first half to maybe put that pressure ahead as Chiesa's on the ball again. Chiesa plays it forward towards the edge of the penalty area for Tezi, looking for a tegue, but a crucial touch inside the penalty area from, I think, Vardiol onto Sotalo, and it bobbles back towards Lavakovic. It was a little bit lucky, I've got to say. Fratesi just looking to play that in. It inadvertently hits a Croatian knee in there and goes towards the goalkeeper. Otherwise, Rategui was just there to control and shoot instantly. You can react to this game on the sports bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy. After our coverage on the TalkSport network this evening, 03717 They'll also be looking ahead to England's final group game against Slovenia tomorrow night. That's live on Talk Sport with Serbia, Denmark over on Talk Sport 2. And then Jeff Stelling, Ali McCoy's with breakfast tomorrow morning. Ashley Young and Ricky Lambert among their guests looking ahead to the England game. Unrivaled coverage on Talk Sport throughout the day as Italy look to build again. The high ball in towards Damian at the far post. He drives the shot in with a lack of conviction, it must be said and it's blocked by Stanisic and it will be a throw in for Italy on this near side he just looked awkward there Darmian when the ball fell to him it was a half a chance really on his left hand side that's the issue though taken off to Marco who might have still had an oh, injury taken issue Darmian off. Uh, exactly you've still got that left footed player on the on the left hand side I think to Marco would have given a, a better fist of that well Italy can see so few goals in Euros games but at the moment they could be heading for back-to-back -back defeats in a Euros for the first time in their history but here is an opportunity now on the edge of the penalty area for Raspadore but it's hammered away by Sotalo but Italy come back with Jorginho Fratesi down the right the cross in Noah's blocked by Pongracic and it will be another Italian corner 67 minutes played on Talk Sport. Croatia still lead 1-0. Oh, they're being fully stretched now, Croatia. Sotalo with one clearance. Pongracic with the other there. Vitaly Fratesi looking for his partner, Rategui. But that's what they're going to have to do, Croatia. is put in one hell of a shift now. They know what's on the line. They know what's at stake. And I said, if they were to get through, you wouldn't want to face them with that experience in big, big pressure moments. Italy's ninth corner, an outswinger, fisted clear by Lovakovic at the near post, headed down by Jorginho. Barella on the far side. And the cross-in was deflected, but it's helped on towards Fratesi, kicked clear by Lovakovic, now Calafiori, Chiesa now down the left-hand side, first time cross into the penalty area, headed away by Pongracic. Modric gets a toe and it's headed clear. And now Jorginho, under pressure from Kramaric, does well to play it wide to Di Lorenzo on the far side. Here is Bastoni for Italy. The blue shirt swarming forward again. Chiesa has stayed out on the left. 22 minutes to play. Italy a goal down. They'll finish third in the group if it stays like this. I mean, it's got the feel of the last three minutes, let alone with 20 plus to go. I would be amazed if Croatia can hold out playing this way for that amount of time because it only feels like a matter of time before Italy do get through Calafiori fighting Bastoni but if Croatia do go through you don't want to face them with the possibility of extra time and penalties Chiesa with a cross into the penalty area hammered clear by Pongracic again in fact it was Sotalo with the clearance and it will be a throw in to Italy who are the dominant team at the moment but dominant in terms of territory a goal down with 21 minutes to play on Talk Sport and Croatia looking to bring on experience Ivan Perisic will come on to replace Luka Susic and Perisic another of the old guard knowing that tonight could be his final chance and the former Tottenham man who also won titles at Dortmund and Bayern in Germany comes on to win his 134th cap important that they have those experienced players and actually important they try and get on the ball and whether that's being able to dribble out as Perisic can do but they've got to try and give 
themselves a chance to get up the pitch to relieve the pressure. Luka Ivanjicic is also coming on as well. And it's Kovacic who will make way. And the Feyenoord attacking midfielder will just slot in behind Kramaric. And Perisic, of course, someone who knows Spalletti very well following their time at Inter. As it's cleared away by Pongracic on this near side. Headed down by Calafiore to find Jorginho. Italy won't be out tonight, but they'll be waiting on third place. And that could be a nervy time. And it, even if they go through, it just eats away at you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. I would still expect them to get through, if I'm honest. Just because of that goal difference over Hungary, who've got three points. And then you're asking... Slovenia and Czechia to go and win their games Fratesi has been shoved over by Gvardiol free kick for Italy pretty central 25 yards out with 19 minutes to play on Talk Sport Croatia 1 Italy 0 Spalletti stood on the edge of his technical area with all of his backroom team gathered behind him yeah, they look like a 1960s jazz band stood there with his coaches next to him in their sharp jackets but they looked nervous didn't they looked pensive as to what's to come and the position that they're in but this is a a great position for one of their technical players to whip this up and over the wall well they've been here in this sort of scenario on so many occasions in recent years and apart from the games at Wembley and the Euros they've lost on every occasion playoffs against the likes of Sweden and Also, Macedonia, and they, they've got problems here. They started without that intensity, and it could cost them, but here was a free kick, and it's Calafiori who shapes to hit it, but it's Raspadori who curls it, and the wall stands firm. It flicks off the top of it and goes behind off Sotalo for a corner. Yeah, that was, that was vital. There was pace on that free kick from Raspadori. I think it was centrally. I think the, the goalkeeper... Levakovic would have handled that safely but still job did its fall corner in towards the near post headed away though again by Sotalo and then nodded further clear by Budimir and here is Barella and our stats team are doing a great job 17,000 313 days between Luka Modric's first international goal against Italy and the one he scored tonight <laughs> absolutely incredible longevity and still the quality and the character you know to, to miss the penalty but then be alive and alert to the situation to finish calmly yellow card is out again for Croatia Pong Pongracic is the player who has been booked will be back to Dusseldorf shortly but Italy looking to attack from the free kick with Jorginho 17 minutes to play all of a sudden Croatia 1, Italy 0 Luka Modric with the goal 33 seconds after missing a penalty Italy though finding it really hard to break Croatia down here they've rediscovered that sort of resilience they usually reserve for the knockout rounds now Bastoni again wide towards the far side and Di Lorenzo but the ball is over hit beyond Fratesi of course commentary on the Spain-Albania game is over on TalkSport 2 with Jim and Stewart watching the game for us here on TalkSport is Adrian Durham 16 left of the 90 here Albania nil Spain won but Albania trying to get back into it their high energy the amount of energy they've put into this game has been unbelievable and Breuer nearly nearly put them on level terms a fantastic run the free kick found him he forced a great save from David Riot in the Spain goal Amin Yamal has come on one of four subs which shows you Spain are tired but they're leading Albania nil Spain won and if Albania produce the comeback of comebacks and Italy lose this game, they're out. Raspadori is making way for Italy. And the player he replaced here today, Gianluca Scamacca, comes on. And he'll give them something different, especially if they can now get down the sides and look to lift that into the area. He'll be a genuine threat in the air with his size and movement. 15 minutes to go on Talk Sport. Croatia 1, Italy 0 in Leipzig. Chiesa on the far side back towards Jorginho 
Croatia have to win this game. They are winning it. Italy will finish third in the group if it stays like this. Darmian infield to Chiesa, but he slips and the flag is up for offside anyway against Darmian, who was looking down the line and still found himself offside. And it will be a free kick for Croatia. And Spalletti, arms clasped out in front of him. He looks a worried man. Italy's oldest coach in Euros history, heading towards 66 years of age. And he must be feeling every single one of those years at the moment because Italy, once again, are not getting the job done when it matters. And the defending champions look nowhere near the sort of team who could maybe retain this title not on this performance but they came into the game with a plan didn't they to sit defend hope to get a goal on the break against Croatia nearly did it in the first half but it's not worked and they've got to keep that calmness that they showed against Albania in the first game and, and know that they have got the quality to create chances it's just can they put those away when they create them well Italy have not lost successive games in the calendar year since 2014 when they were beaten by both Costa Rica and Uruguay at the World Cup having won 2-1 against England in Manaus in the first game and then they lost twice of course that infamous match against Uruguay and ended up going out as Chiesa looks to chase on the far side but Von Grakic comes across to win it back but only briefly now Chiesa tries to find Rategui he was surely offside but the cross in from him was dreadful he was offside and it's a free kick for Croatia yeah he just lost his bearings Rategui there if he'd have realised and just got his head up he'd have known he was offside Chiesa again causing problems though this time making a run from out to in trying to get in behind it just looks as if Croatia are going to say right come on you try and break us down we've got our lead we know what to do in these situations we've done it time and time again and you write us off at your peril Budme does well to win the ball on the edge of the Italian penalty area in the air but Italy quickly have it back but Brozovic will step across to win it back from Fratesi but only briefly Pongracic tangling with Rategui on this near side Pongracic has been shown the yellow card I don't think he was the player booked earlier but he has been booked now Marin Pongracic no, I think it must have been Ivan Sucic who the substitute who came on who stood next to Pongracic for that first Ivan yellow Ivan for that booked, first yeah. yellow card hence probably why Pongracic make that challenge in knowing he wasn't on a yellow card and just wanted to break up the play. You're listening to Euro Game Day Live on Talk Sport, presented by Burger King. Bring home the ultimate food satisfaction. Get your favourites delivered now. The Talk Sport Network, the only place you can hear on UK radio every single game from your way for Euro 2024. And what a scenario we have here. 12 minutes to play, Croatia 1, Italy 0. Croatia going through as of right with Spain into the round of 16 Italy will have to wait on third place as it stands Albania will be going out although they've given their fans plenty of moments to cherish during this tournament Gvardio forward now midway inside the Italian half 11 minutes to play Stanisic short towards Sotalo Modric flicks down the line what a great ball as well to find Brozovic who is able to keep the ball in play the early cross in aimed towards Budimir and he was bearing down on that Bastoni with a crucial touch but it will be a throw in for Croatia on the far side gorgeous bit of play from Modric control with the inside flick with the outside of the foot into Brozovic who's making that driving run from midfield I tell you what it was a brilliant cross in as well Bastoni had to be at full stretch to glance that away from Budimir he's added something but a bit more physicality at the top end of the pitch since he's come on well Modric is now coming off and he gives the armband to Perisic and he gives him a come on as he heads off and gets a standing ovation from 
every single Croatian supporter and also one or two Italians as well. Lovro Maia will replace him, but at the age of 38, Luka Modric doing everything he can to keep the Croatian dream alive. We said it before the game, those teammates look towards him. And what a show of strong character it's been from missing the penalty to then putting them ahead. He's also been brilliant on the ball. You know, he barely gives it away, still showing those signs of top, top quality. As Ray Wilkins used to say on TalkSport, he's got eyes in his backside. <laughs> now, Croatia have been penalised for handball midway inside the Italian half. Don't forget tomorrow, the end of Group D at five o'clock. The Netherlands against Austria on Talk Sport, France against Poland on Talk Sport 2, and then Group C, England against Slovenia here on Talk Sport, Serbia against Denmark over on Talk Sport 2. In Group C, as Damian and Jorginho go off, and Zakani and Fagioli come on for Italy. Final throw of the dice for them. Very much so. Damian, as the left back, was never looked particularly attacking and comfortable again they might have just shifted back to a, a back three with two high wing backs now one of them Chiesa and the other one Zakani. now Skamaka lays it wide to this near side and Calafiori eight and a half minutes to play on talk sport Croatia one Italy nil oh rush challenge from Stanicic on this near side, I think there'll be at least a yellow card for that. To catch Fagioli, and indeed he is booked. The yellow cards mounting up now for Croatia late in the game. Stanicic, Pogracic and Ivanjusec, the players still on the field. Yeah, again, he's gone in late. Actually, there wasn't a huge amount of contact. Zakani's made a, a lot of it. Cleared away on the far side by Ivanjusec. Eight minutes to play. Croatia 1, Italy 0 here on Talk Sport. We'll be back to Dusseldorf shortly as Stanicic comes forward now for Croatia. Down the right-hand side, looks to play in Ivanjusec, but it's cleared away by Calafiori, but the back heel only finds Kramaric. And now Stanicic again, and Zlatko Dalic has been constantly telling his team just to keep the ball, and they're doing that here now. Brozovic all the way back and then Sotalo has the option of Lovakovic so let's check in once again in Dusseldorf and Adrian Durham well as you join me it's Albania nil Spain 1 but Albania going close yet again they're trying to force the issue high high energy and massive effort from Albania but they just can't get on the score sheet Hoxha has just come on he has just flashed one high and wide when maybe he could have done better but Ferran Torres first half goal still separates the sides it's Albania nil Spain 1 Skamaka was almost in there for Italy but a crucial challenge and here is Lovro Meyer on the counter attack now for Croatia 7 minutes to play in Leipzig Croatia 1 Italy nil. at the moment Croatia going through with Spain into the round of 16 it will be Switzerland against Croatia. And now an opportunity for Croatia to finish things off. But Calafiori got lucky inside the penalty area. His clearance hit Lovro Meyer, but didn't bounce back into the path of Kramaric. And Italy will hammer the ball away. But there's some desperate defending from them at a time when they need to be forcing the issue. Well, they're going to take risks. Of course they are. That's why they brought the players on and just got the three defenders back there. Really important that Calafiori came across but it's almost as if they've their senses have just gone up a level those Croatian defenders looked a little bit loose in the first half but been brilliant since the goal Budimir hauls down Bastoni on the far side and it will be a free kick for Italy in their right back area close to the corner flag five and a half minutes to play Croatia one Italy nil Luka Modric with the only goal so far 30 seconds after missing a penalty now Maia plays it forward Brozovic inside the penalty area back towards Maia cleared away by Calafiori 
but Ivanjusic has it now for Croatia. Wydal is near side and Brozovic. Stanicic holds his run and Brozovic with a cross into the arms of Donnarumma. Nearly, very, very nearly with the reverse pass into Maya. But Calafiore was there again. He had another very good night after a, a difficult game against Spain, but he was brilliant in the first game. For such a young player. 03717 double two double three double four the number to call Jamie O'Hara and Jason Candy on the sports bar at the end of this game to react to what we've seen here and in Dusseldorf and also look ahead to England's final group game tomorrow night England going through with tonight's results as at least a best third place team but they can win the group by taking care of business against Slovenia Chiesa now for Italy tries to slip it in towards Rategui but it's hammered away by Brozovic into the crowd on the far side and it will be a throw in for Italy four minutes to play and one or two Italian shoulders are now slumped well he just wanted somebody just to use as a backboard there to play into and receive it back and every single Italian forward was looking for the cross and looking to make their run into the penalty area Italy have not had an effort on target in the second half they've had one significant one in the entire game here is Chiesa back towards Barella Italy now trying to build with Scamacca Retegui on the edge of the penalty area Chiesa pulls it in and somehow Scamacca fails to convert three yards out he collided with Lovakovic a great ball into the penalty area but somehow no one in a blue shirt got the finishing touch why did he hesitate that's the question why he was slow in the way that he darted towards the near post and he allowed Stanisic just to put him under pressure and then he can't stretch out his leg because the defender is there he had to be more alert and incisive with that first run because it was there to be tapped in Spalletti had balding head in hands there that was the chance for Italy Smartly worked by Chiesa, but neither Skamaka or Ategui could get the crucial touch. The Croatian supporters making all the noise at the moment as Luka Modric is almost out on the edge of the technical area, coaching the Croatian team himself. And one of their players, Stanisic, has gone down with cramp with two and a half minutes of normal time to play. And it's in their interest for him to get up as quickly as possible. Well, and again, go back to recent tournaments that experience that way of seeing games out against the odds they know what they're doing and they're about to make another change and it will be defensive on Josip Juranovic of Union Berlin will be coming on two minutes of normal time to play Italy have been dreadful in the second half they trail by a goal to nil they are going to finish third in group B as it stands here is Kramaric now on this near side for Croatia finding Stanicic he's got the opportunity to head to the corner flag but he checks back and finds Lovro Meyer. now Stanicic again rather stiff legged following the cramp plays a 1-2 with Brozovic Stanicic though heads towards the byline tries to turn back beyond Calafiori who makes the challenge and it will be a goal kick but precious seconds have been wasted there yeah his calves just said no that final little bit of skill just wouldn't work for his legs after that bit of cramp Kramaric is going off for Croatia so the centre forward replaced by a defender Juranovic will come on Kramaric with a great roll for the goal it was his cross which was helped on by Budimir parried by Donnarumma and Modric did the rest and Kramaric turns to cheerlead towards the Croatian spectators who don't need any encouragement many of them stripped to the waist also wearing those water polo scrum caps Croatia have such a great team and their football team are doing themselves proud here again eventually in this tournament 30 seconds of normal time to play on talk sport Spain still leading Albania by a goal to nil Albania going out with pride 
at the moment Croatia will go through in second place with Spain and Italy will have to wait and see but again one goal could completely change everything for Croatia that's why we're seeing this defensive display they know what's on the line if Italy do finish third they could end up meeting someone like Portugal in the round of 16 it could get very tough very quickly for them and they're trying to build now with Fagioli now Chiesa cuts in field slipped into the penalty area cut up by Sotalo back towards Chiesa again the through ball is blocked Calafiori wide to this near side but it's slid clear and Brozovic will try and lead the counter attack but he doesn't quite have the legs but he does have the legs to catch Bastoni and it will be a free kick for Italy and we are into a minimum of eight more minutes he's showing incredible desire though he's going to get a yellow card Brozovic but I've got to say the level of effort he's put in in this second half has been incredible he's been the one that's been driving forwards from that midfield area making those long runs to either help his team in attacking sense or defensively Skamaka tries to find Fratesi but he wasn't really set for the through ball hammered away by Stanicic Italy have never failed to score in back-to-back -back Euros games but they've been as blunt as a spoon in the second half as Barella tries to come forward now but the challenge comes in from Gradio it is attack against defence now with six and a half minutes of added time to play Skamaka turns and looks to fire in the shot right footed but it was deflected behind it will be a corner kick he has got that ability to strike with real power and accuracy from distance and once again another diving challenge from Brozovic he's almost taken on that Luka Modric role of organising and leading by example Spain still leading Albania 1-0 over on Talk Sport 2 Zakanya with the corner kick into the penalty area headed away by Perisic at the far post Gvardiol gets there before Di Lorenzo an intelligent ball forward now to find Juranovic who's shoved over by Calafiori free kick for Croatia and that's ideal for them yeah a little bit of naivety there from Calafiori yellow card for Calafiori and a yellow card but you just don't need to give that free kick away he's not going to run away from you just get back make him go backwards and try and keep them in Calafiori will now be suspended should Italy make the round of 16 there'll be a miss missing him certainly Gianluigi Buffon part of the backroom team sitting in the Italian bench of course his international career was ended by a failure in a World Cup playoff there will be a similar feeling here for the Italians it won't all be over tonight but these European Championships suddenly taking a very nasty turn for them and like I said I, I, I still think they will go through but it will not be a nice feeling for the next few days, that's for sure. Letting this one slip and Luka Modric just hands clasp, praying that his team get through here. He looks as nervous as a kitten on the far side as Maya tries to bring it forward. Perisic there will allow the ball to drift out. Three minutes of added time played. Croatia 1, Italy 0. On Talk Sport. Albania nil, Spain won over on Talk Sport 2, the final night of Group B, and the drama here in Leipzig. Croatia inching towards the victory to send them through against the odds, but they always seem to do it against the odds. Now Budimir goes down under a challenge, hauled down by Fratesi, free kick for Croatia, just outside the Italian penalty area, and the game management from Italy late in the second half has been lamentable but also you've got to give credit to Croatia actually those changes from Zlatko Dalic just to freshen things up to actually keep the ball because after the goal for a good seven eight minutes it was just all Italian pressure made a couple of changes they've kept the ball better they've won some free kicks and they're just eking the time away Donnarumma organising his wall a rather ragged Italian wall Brozovic plays it wide to the far side and Ivanjusic and Croatia here just looking to 
work the ball around Lovro Meyer comes square he's got Juranovic in support plays the one two Meyer on the stretch does well to play it wide to the right plenty of room for Stanicic who picks his way through the several empty beer bottles and glasses on the pitch one of them actually the ball actually hits a beer bottle and changes direction momentarily Budimir finding Perisic who launches the ball high across the penalty area and behind for a goal kick but time will be wasted three minutes of added time to play it is ridiculous those plastic beakers that are just being thrown from the stands getting in the way actually of their own players wasn't quite Darren Bent's beach ball but something <laughs> fairly similar Croatia coming forward again now fresh legs of Juranovic into space down the right hand side cuts it back to the edge of the penalty area Ivanja Sec though unable to win it back but Brozovic then comes in with a crucial challenge on Barella Brozovic goes down as if he's being caught but I think a yellow card is shown and it's uh, Fagioli who was penalised for the earlier challenge Fagioli looking as if hang on what? and then remembered the challenge from earlier but Barella against his former teammate Brozovic there yeah it was Fagioli who pulled down Gvardiol off the ball the free kick eventually was given to Italy but Scamacca now from the high ball forward will try and nod it down to Retegui hammered away by Gvardiol who then seems to pull up with cramp into the Italian technical area Spain have beaten Albania by a goal to nil they will win the group Albania are out in Leipzig 90 seconds of added time to play Croatia 1 Italy 0 Luka Modric the goal scorer seconds after missing a penalty and Croatia at the moment are heading through with Spain and Italy will be into the third place lottery and now Italy have given the ball away again Brozovic on the halfway line not interested in charging forward plays it back towards Perisic launched high looking for Budimir Barella though losing out Budimir look, thought he could break into the penalty area but he's been penalised for a nudge on Barella and Italy have a free kick we're into the 8th minute of added time but they don't look like scoring they don't they've not been able to get the ball into the Croatian boxers yet but still there might be time Calafiori Calafiori charging forward now down the centre plays it wide towards the opportunity and it's hammered in by Zaccagni and Zaccagni has done it for Italy in the 98th minute and that's the goal to send them through and send Croatia out the Italian players fall to the ground Joy and relief etched on their faces. The Croatian players flat out in utter despair. Two nations, fortunes transformed in the blink of an eye. Zekanji's Carla finding the back of a net for Italy. They will limp through into the round of 16. And Croatia are heading home. They were seconds away from going through. But that really is a moment which will haunt Croatia and delight Italy. Croatia won, Italy won with the final kick of the game. Mattia Zakanyi, what a finish this is. He steps onto it, he sizes it up and he just whips the inside of his foot on the outside of the ball to arc it into the far corner with pace, with bend, with accuracy. Livakovic absolutely no chance it's a stunning, stunning finish one tiny lapse of concentration from Croatia has done for them as Spalletti wheels away he can't believe it either what an end to this game it's all over it was the final kick Italy are through to the round of 16 but for Croatia, football's golden oldies. They finally have to succumb to the passage of time. They are out in agonising circumstances. For so long in the second half, it looked as though Modric's goal was carrying them through. But in the closing seconds of added time, a brilliant finish from Mattia Zaccagni. His first international goal 
What a time to score it. What a place to score it. It has carried Italy through somehow into the round of 16. And Croatia are out. Luka Modric looked to have been the hero. But have we seen the last of him on the international stage? Italian tears of joy. Croatian tears of despair. It is finished. Croatia won. Italy won. And somehow the Italians have sneaked through. Wow, just wow about that. Dean Ashton, gather your thoughts. Let me give you Group B. Spain have won 1-0 here in Dusseldorf against Albania. The Albania players and fans just celebrating the moment. Uh, Fantastic scenes here in Dusseldorf. But Group B finishes up like this. Spain with three wins from three, nine points. Italy in second qualify. They're on four points. Croatia with two points go out. Albania with one point at the bottom of the group. They go out as well. But talk to me about that. Italy's only shot on target, second half, deep, deep in injury time. Dean Ashton, and somehow they got themselves out of jail. An extraordinary end. The emotions of the players on the pitch from both sides. They're shaking with disbelief. They're sobbing with disbelief. It's an extraordinary moment of these Euros. I'm sorry, but that is what football gives you. It gives you these just incredible moments where Croatia look comfortable. They look like they've done the impossible and they're going to get through once again. You know, they're waiting to come on and celebrate from the sidelines. Luka Modric leading that. And then just one tiny lapse in concentration. The ball falling, fortunately. Calafiori is going to miss the next game. Drives through again. Plays it into Zakanyi. And then you find the best bit of quality all game to find the top corner from Zakanyi. It's just brilliant what this sport gives us. Isn't it? Zakanyi's first international goal. And what about Croatia? They must have thought they got the job done. They conceded in the 95th minute an equaliser in the last game. 98th minute they've conceded an equaliser in this game and it means that they go out. But for so long it looked like Luka Modric's penalty was saved and then he goes and scores seconds later it looked like that was going to take them through we've had real drama in Leipzig tonight Dean oh haven't we I mean it looked like just the typical Croatian tournament game didn't it they'd just been able to work their way through it and then they looked locked in as if nothing was going to get through there was every single player was putting their hand up for for player of the match because of that defensive display for the last 20 to 25 minutes but still you can't switch off at this level you can't because there are players in the tournament at any given moment that if you give them half a chance are capable of what we've seen and they can't have done much more Croatia they were outstanding defensively but if you switch off for a second that's it lights out home time Extraordinary stuff. Let me just recap what's happened here in Dusseldorf. Albania nil, Spain won. Spain with a 100% record. Three wins out of three from the group stage. Uh, from left side centre-back, Laporte for a low pass through half the pitch to Danny Olmo in the number 10 position. He turned and played a pass into the path of Ferran Torres. Run inside on the diagonal from the left wing, from the right wing rather. He opened up his body, curled a pass into the back of the net off the post. Magical football. 1-0 Spain first half and at half time as well. Omo later tried one from the centre circle but scuffed it. Albania will be missed from this tournament. From the off, they showed high energy, they showed intent. And then when Croatia uh, took the lead in Leipzig, Albania here raised their game again. Broya had a great effort beaten out. Aslani fired a good effort wide. And Albania were fueled by the passion of their incredible fans. A connection between supporters and team, I don't think, has ever been more clear than it was here in Dusseldorf tonight the stunning effort of each and every Albania player made the energy of the Spanish Spanish and De La Fuente had to make a succession of subs to give his side the legs to see the job through Albania's support was amazing their players gave everything to the cause in injury time Broya acute drag back on the penalty spot in the box a flick shot which forced a fly and save from David Raya just wouldn't go in it was a brilliant first half from Spain breathless second half from Albania I'm exhausted just watching it final score Albania nil Spain won Spain win the group Albania go home uh, it is Croatia going home as well Italy finish in second a thrilling night let's take a look at the King performance thanks to Burger King 
King Performance on Talk Sport with Burger King. Bring home the ultimate food satisfaction with the Gourmet King's Barbecue Steakhouse Angus. Order your Burger King delivery now. Well, this is a tricky one, Dean Ashton. Who are you going for? Oh, I mean, I've had to change my mind three or four times, and I'm going to give it to Calafiore because he got himself yellow carded. He was terrific all game, and then it was him that drove forwards from that centre back position, one two, and then laid it in towards Zakanyi, who obviously finished. But to still be able to do that drive, knowing you're going to miss that next game as well, he was in tears at the end of the match, realizing that he would miss that. But he was brilliant all night. Fifth cap. I mean, you know, there's a real, real player there. Yeah, amazing stuff from Italy right at the end. That was our King Performance Pick in association with Burger King.